Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of CFA Level 2. Today we'll be covering the remaining portion of our first reading from FRA Intercorporate Investments. Now in the first session itself, we did cover two major details specifically about intercorporate investments. One was when your investments are classified as financial assets, which means you're doing them just for the purpose of investment, no influence, no control, any of those things. And the second situation was investment in associates where the intention was to have some sort of influencing power on top of the companies in which I was investing. So we looked at all of the accounting treatments of both of those. The main focus for today's session is going to be the third kind of classification for investment, which was investigation in case of business combination. So for business combination, we cover all sort of transactions like mergers, acquisitions, any consolidation work, all of those are part of business combination, basically where I want to take a controlling stake in the company that I'm investing. Now, the good thing is IFRS does not differentiate or give any sort of difference between terminologies, but US GAAP does give a lot of terminologies. US GAAP classifies three transactions, mergers, acquisitions, and consolidation. So US GAAP has given definition of what is going to differentiate between these three. So as such, all business combinations according to US GAAP will fall within one of these three categories. Now, we've already discussed mergers and acquisitions in our corporate finance discussion itself. So over here, I'm just going to take a simplified approach. Mergers is a case where one company acquires the entire business of the other company and that other company ceases to exist. So effectively, if I have two companies A and B, post merger, we only have A. B is entirely gone. All of B's assets and operations have been merged with A itself. Acquisitions is a case where we have two companies and after the acquisition as well, we will have two companies. The only difference is after the acquisition is done, the relation of the two companies becomes that of a parent company and a subsidiary company. So as such, both companies still exist. They are still legally separate entities, but now they have a parent and subsidiary relation that is established post the acquisition. And consolidation is a case where we have two companies. Both of them cease to exist and create a new entity that overtakes all of the combined operations of two initial companies. So I hope the basic difference is clear. This classification again, only as per US GAAP, IFRS does not make any such distinction. Now, another thing we need to be aware of is that for business combination till a few years back, the accounting standards, both in US GAAP and IFRS, they used to have a couple of methods. One was acquisition method and the other was pooling of interest method. The good thing for you is over the recent years, accounting standards have eliminated pooling of interest method as that is no longer relevant. And in your syllabus also, pooling of interest method has been removed. So as such, just knowing that earlier there used to be another method by the name of pooling of interest method. That is good enough for your syllabus because in a lot of third party study material and curriculum, you will have mentions of the word pooling of interest method. So don't be surprised. No calculations relating to that are part of your syllabus. The focus for CFL level 2 syllabus for us is primarily going to be on acquisition method. And this is common across US GAAP and IFRS. Now, a lot of students who have some sort of accountancy background, chartered accountants or CPAs, if you're outside India, they will have much better understanding already of how this process is done. And trust me, if you have that understanding, all of it is applicable here. The good thing is in CFA, as I've mentioned countless number of times, this is an exam of finance, not of accountancy, not of financial reporting. As a result, the focus is not on you being able to understand or apply acquisition method. That is an accountant's role. Your job and your purpose with CFA is to be able to understand how this impacts the final financial statements that you might have to analyze. So as a CFA Institute is not concerned with you 
implementing this whole method. They are just interested in you knowing enough about this method so that you are able to analyze the financial statements which are prepared after application of acquisition method. So we have a very basic implementation of this for the purpose of our syllabus. So in order to understand this further, let's look at how balance sheet and income statements are impacted as part of acquisition method. So here I have a basic example to help us understand how the acquisition method would work in a much easier, simpler manner. So think of a situation where company P has purchased 60% stake in company S, which means company P now owns 60% of shareholding of company S. So P parent company, S subsidiary company. And they have purchased this for a sum of $12,000. So now if we look at the balance sheet of companies P and S. For company P, the equity is 52,000 non-current liabilities. Current liabilities are given. And you have non-current assets other than investments. So within non-current assets, you can have tangible, intangibles, and then you have investments. I am noting investments separately just for the sake of clarity. So they have other non-current assets as 50,000, current assets of 20,000. And the money they have invested in company P, that is being showcased in their balance sheet as investment in S. And the subsidiary company has equity, non-current liability, non-current assets, and current assets, current liability given as follows. Now, from this, one of the ways, or rather the approach that the accounting standards require which is known as the acquisition method, what that says is that any company which is the holding company, at the end of the year, when they're making financials, they have to make two sets of financials. One is known as standalone financial, and the other is known as consolidated financial statements. Standalone means what are the financial statements of company P just for their own business. And consolidated financial statements would include not just their business, but also the business of all the subsidiaries. So as such, this financial statement that you see, this is already standalone. So accounting standards say any company that is a holding company has to make standalone financial statements. And they also have to make consolidated ones where they absorb all the effect of their subsidiaries as well. For those consolidated ones, we have the acquisition method. So let's see how balance sheet would be made according to that method. So the rules of acquisition method say that all assets and liabilities of subsidiary are absorbed 100% of whatever their book value is. So if I want to do that, what we'll do is, let's make another balance sheet. This is balance sheet. I'm making it in a T format so that it's easy to understand. We have balance sheet of company P, but this is consolidated, which means this includes the businesses and the entire operations of the subsidiaries as well. So non-current assets. Non-current assets, they themselves had 50,000 and their subsidiary had 20,000. The first rule of acquisition method says all assets and liability of subsidiary are absorbed 100%, which means this 20,000 would now be added with this 50,000 and we have a non-current asset of 70,000. Next item is investments. Now, whenever we do the consolidation approach, effectively what I'm doing is, that my investment is showing in my finances as 12,000, but it's also some part of this company SS equity. So as such, what I'll do is, this item will have to be eliminated. Effectively, the whole process of consolidation is to expand this 12,000 to represent the actual operations of your subsidiary rather than just one single item. So this investment will not show up. That is why we do the consolidation, that I don't want a single line item, I want the details of the entire subsidiaries instead of this. And then current assets, again, you add them all up. Current assets, 30,000. Then on the liability side, we have current liabilities and non-current liabilities. Again, just add them all up. So non-current liabilities, this will come out as 25,000. And current liabilities will come out as 15,000. 
and my company already has an equity of 52,000. Keep in mind over here, I have said assets and liability. Please do not combine equity also. Equity is not to be combined. So equity, 52,000. However, if I am incorporating 100% of assets of company S, it is not logically correct for me to do so. Why? Because I only own 60% stake. Yes, 60% stake implies that I can control company S. But I am still not having 100% ownership of all of their net current assets, current liabilities. So acquisition method says that while this is the first rule, this rule also is not giving us the true and fair picture of the actual operations when we combine holding and subsidiary company. For that, you also have to have a second step, which is minority interest. If you remember from level one, minority interest is that part of my subsidiary, which I as a parent company do not own. So if I am the owner of 60% stake in subsidiary, there is someone else who owns the remaining 40%. If I'm taking 100% of this asset in my finances, I also want to showcase that out of this 100%, 40% is owned by someone else, someone other than me. For that, we add minority interest. Minority interest is nothing but is stake of subsidiary, not owned by parent and this is an item that shows up in the consolidated financials of the parent company so over here if you think company s has a total equity of 20000 out of which i own 60 percent 12000 what is the remaining portion of that equity that i do not own it is 8000 so we'll show 8000 as minority interest and we have balance sheet matching on both the sides so effectively this is what the acquisition method is saying it is saying absorb 100 percent of the assets and then have a single item in the form of minority interest which represents the portion of the subsidiaries business that you do not own because effectively the accounting standard says that if you own more than 50 percent you anyways have control over the subsidiary so you control 100 percent of the assets so add all of them up so that operationally when you see, I can see all the assets. Operationally, I control all the operations of the subsidiary. So I should show all the assets that these are the assets under my control. But I don't have ownership over these assets. That is why we remove some portion by the way of minority interest. So I hope the balance sheet adjustment made sense. Now on the exact similar logic, we also have adjustment for income statement. Let's look at that. 